Hi, story time lovers. How is your day going? Tell me, what has been the best part of your day so far? For me, it was starting a new novel that I just bought, reading it in the sun and breathing in the morning's fresh air. Um, no, come to think of it, the best part of my day so far has got to be this morning while my children and I were clearing breakfast all the while dancing and singing to Barry White. The point is, it's only just after lunchtime and I already feel so much gratitude for my day. It doesn't mean my day has been perfect or without challenges, but I want to make sure to take in and appreciate the little things that make my life such a privileged one. How would you define gratitude? Gratitude means being grateful. It means showing thanks and appreciation. Gratitude is a form of positive thinking and positive thinking is essential to life. It's what we call a virtuous circle. Positivity leads to more positivity. In other words, positive thoughts attract positive energy and positive vibes. So, before I tell you about the author of today's book, think again and tell me, what has been the best part of your day so far? Something you feel grateful for. Gratitude is my superpower was written by Alicia Ortego. Alicia Ortego lives in New York and is a school teacher. She has been working with children for over 20 years. Imagine how lucky her pupils are to have such an amazing teacher. And just like the authors of many books I have read to you on this channel, Alicia is a debut author and an independent publisher. So please support her by getting your own copy of Gratitude is My Superpower to read along with me. And you should really check out her three other books in the My Superpower series because they are key in helping you practice positive thinking. In fact, many of her books are used by teachers in schools. These books are Kindness is My Superpower, about empathy and compassion. Acceptance is My Superpower, about diversity and equality. And my personal favorite, Breathing is My Superpower, a mindfulness book that will give you the keys to feeling calm and peaceful, including five breathing techniques. And by the way, they work on children as well as adults, so get a grown-up to do it with you because I don't know if you've noticed, but grown-ups also need to breathe sometimes. And now, let me introduce you to a little girl called Betsy and her turtle who goes by the name of Mr. T. Hi, my name is Betsy and this is Mr. T. I'm only seven, but he's 70. You wouldn't know to look at him. He never seems to age. He slowly moves around the house and doesn't have a cage. One day, when I was playing with him, I suddenly felt quite sad. What's the matter? Mum said. You're usually so glad. It's Mr. T. I said to her, I think there's something wrong. To carry that big house all day, he has to be so strong. Do you think it stops him from having fun like me? I've never seen him run or jump as happy as can be. Oh my dear, you mustn't worry. Mr. T is fine. Turtles have different needs in life. They're not like yours or mine. The nature of a turtle is harmless, quiet, and shy. They love to hide inside their shells when people pass them by. So Mr. T is very grateful for everything he's got, which means he doesn't worry about things he has not. Let's play a game together, Mum said. I call it gratitude. It'll help you understand Mr. T are you in the mood? Mum takes me to the garden and just behind the flowers, picking up a stone, she says, this has superpowers. Every time you're upset, when things don't go as planned, you take out your gratitude stone and hold it in your hand. The stone will work its magic and soon you'll begin to see everything that's happening is how it's meant to be. 
No sooner had we gone inside, the sky began to rain. Tears began to fill my eyes. I wanted to go out again. Remembering my special stone, I squeezed with all my might. What could I be grateful for when rain was in my sight? But just then I remembered, without it, plants can't grow. Fish wouldn't live in the sea and rivers wouldn't flow. Thank you, Sky, for raining. You're really rather clever. Now I know the job you do. You can rain whenever. Next morning, when it's time to wake, my body's filled with dread. Going to school is the last thing I want. I'd rather stay home instead. Beneath my pillow is my stone. I squeeze it once again, remembering the friends I'd see and my teacher, Mrs. Blaine. At school, I had forgotten today was sibling day. I don't have any siblings, so I didn't know what to say. My stone will have the answer, I thought. I'll squeeze it and we'll see. Of course, I said, I'm grateful because I have Mr. T. At dinner time, it worked again. When mum put down my plate, no yummy cake, but rice and veg, which I didn't appreciate. But then I remembered the children who aren't as lucky as me to have a healthy, warm meal cooked by their mummy. At bedtime, when I'm not tired and want to play instead, I'm grateful for my turtle PJs and warm and cozy bed. But just then, I remember I'm not even carrying the stone. Mum! I shout. I did gratitude and I did it on my own. Of course you did, my darling, because gratitude is in there. Upon my heart, she places her hand. With the other, she strokes my hair. So, gratitude's in all of us, I said. And all we have to do is stop and think how thankful we are instead of feeling blue. Next day, during playtime, there is a new boy there with shiny braces on his teeth and curly light brown hair. Tears are falling down his face. He wished he had not moved, a decision made by his parents that he had not approved. I tell him of the gratitude stone and ask if we can find something to be thankful for that he can bear in mind. He holds the stone and thinks a minute, a smile across his face. I'm thankful for our new home. The garden has so much space. Now, every time I go out, I make sure to have with me at least one stone to pass on, along with my story. The more we share about gratitude, the happier we will be. Will you share this story and help other children like me? So, will you? But before you do, let's get some practice so you can hone your gratitude skills. Let's start with a little exercise of gratitude sharing. I'm going to ask you to tell me what you are thankful for. It can be something big, but it can also be small, because even the smallest things can fill us with joy. To give you an example, let me read to you Alicia Ortego's gratitude sharing. Every day, I am grateful for so many things, for the sun that warms and the bird that sings. I am grateful for my family and friends, for the books I write and for my pens. I am grateful for the raindrops and the beautiful rainbow for the trees and flowers, and for the first snow. I am grateful to my little readers and their parents too. That's why I dedicated this book to you. Okay, now your turn. I want you to think about three things that you are thankful for. It could be a person, a place, a sound, a book, or even some food you ate. Are you ready? Number one. 
I am grateful for. Number two. I am grateful for. And number three. I am grateful for. Do you feel a little change in you? Did a smile come across your face? I don't know about you, but when I think about things I'm grateful for, I just start smiling and I feel happier. And when you get your own copy of Gratitude is My Superpower, you can fill in the five days gratitude journal. And when you've completed the journal, you will be ready for the next phase. That is spreading the gratitude by passing on gratitude stones. And if you want to put some love into your gratitude stones, you can make your own stones. How? By following these very simple steps. Step number one, go out for a walk and keep an eye on the ground. Find a stone that calls to you. If possible, try to find one that is small and smooth. Step number two. Once you have found your stone, go home and wash off the dirt and dust with water and lay it out to dry. Step number three. You can use a marker or paint to decorate your stone. It's really up to you. You can draw a heart to spread the love or you could write a word that is important to you like love, gratitude, thank you or even a person's name. Step number four. You can keep the stone for yourself if like Betsy you feel you need it at first but you can also pass it on so as to pass on your positive thinking and help other children who might need it like the little boy at the end of the story. And gratitude stones work just as well for grown-ups, so you can also pass it on to an adult. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this story, our little gratitude exercises, and that you feel ready to go out and use your gratitude skills. For more information about Alicia Ortego and her growth mindset books, you can visit her website and get some free printables. All the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, read on, be grateful, and see you soon.